is he would always tell me people are just people. That has changed my life, Sylvester. So few connections away from some of the most powerful people in the world, connected with some of the most powerful people in the world, however you define power, political power, economic power, whatever it is, right? And the reason I can talk to those people with such confidence is my dad's advice. People are just people. And I'll just throw back one one other story here because I think this is inspiring to students, to teachers, to, to everyone. You are listening to the Global CTE Podcast with your host, Sylvester Chisholm. Welcome, my friend, to another episode of the Global CTE Podcast. I am your host, Sylvester Chisholm. This is the place where we like to wrap a blanket of goodwill around our CTE community, and I interview the best, the brightest, the movers, the shakers, and the innovators. Today is no different. I have my good friend Hannah here, the founder of The Skills. You're not going to want to miss this episode, but let me tell you a little about Hannah. Uh, Hannah Grady-Williams' entrepreneurial journey began in a blue pickup truck. After this jolting introduction to business, she enrolled in college at age 14 and graduated with a degree in international business at the age of 18. Now, at 25, Hannah's the founder of The Skills, a VC-backed startup, shifting students from test prep to life prep to prepare them for careers in a future where AI powers the world. Chris Lockhead calls Hannah a pioneer of our time. And one school administrator also called Hannah offensive to some. I want to hear all about it. Anna, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> what a way to start us out. Hey, Sylvester. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad to be here. I can't wait to uh, to to dive into this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I was super excited to talk with you when our my fellow podcast buddy from uh, What School Can Be, he, he introduced me, said, Han- you got to talk to Hannah. Like, she's a rock star. She's on the edge. She's innovating with her program, The Skills. So super excited to talk about the AI part, The Skills, its connection to CTE. But before we get into all of that in this intro, like, what's the origin story in this blue pickup truck? I have to know. <laughs> This was a fun memory, Sylvester. I I had this really distinctive memory in a blue pickup truck when I was 12. And I think when I look back on my journey, this is the, the pivotal moment in my life where I shifted from student to, oh my gosh, I actually have the opportunity to impact the world. So here's what happened. My dad is an entrepreneur and he was just starting his business. He was very broke when I was 12 and I'm the oldest of seven kids. So he, ha- I have a lot of responsibility on my shoulders, had then, still have now. But when dad was starting his business, me being the oldest, he decided to take me to work a couple days a week. It's usually one or two, you know, a Friday here and there. I have this very, very distinct memory where we're bouncing down the highway in his blue Chevy pickup truck, you know, the rinkety dinkety kind where the suspension was just, you know, it was, it was terrible. And I was sitting in the back trying to get my homework done. Now, dad was a real estate entrepreneur. And again, he was extremely broke at the time, you know, residential real estate. He had a few tenants. We're trying to collect rent door to door that day. Well, out of the blue, he hands me his cell phone and he says, Hannah, there's a guy at the end of the line who wants to sell this house. The phone is ringing and you're going to close the deal. I was freaked out in my mind. <laughs> you can imagine me, 12 years old, you know, you're, you're a studious student who didn't have anything to do with dad's business except sort of watch him from the sidelines. And I suddenly realized in that moment, crap, I got to get things together. I looked at my dad with big eyes, like a look of bewilderment, but I ended up taking the phone and with his help, fumbled through this call. Sure enough, the guy sold his house to us and my parents still own this duplex so I can drive by and have and remember this moment. But here's what it did for me and why I think this was so pivotal is I had this spark light up in me that day at 12 where I realized all the things that I'm learning in school actually have real world application. You know, the the speaking training I was going through, the negotiation role play that my dad would put me through that it actually had a real world impact. And it wasn't until years later, like probably until I was 20, 21, that I realized that most students don't ever get that experience, an experience like that until sometimes after college. 
You know, we spend a lot of time with uh, theoretical work or even hands-on work in school, but most of the time it doesn't leave the four walls of the classroom or the building. And most students, therefore, of course, there's many, many implications, but oftentimes we end up going down pathways for our career that we haven't test driven. Hey, Sylvester here. Quick question, and then we'll get right back to the episode. Have you or your team ever asked a question, we want to do something in AI, but we don't know where to start? Well, today you're in for a treat. My friends at The Skills, Hannah and her team, have created Expedition AI. Expedition AI. It is the perfect solution to layer AI in across your CTE course, perfect for computer science, for intro to business class, even the health sciences are using this. They're already working with over 17,000 students across Michigan and in Hawaii. They're working with the Department of Education there. Listen, this is an opportunity for you to layer in AI in your CTE courses the right way. Hit the link in the description. Back to the episode. That we don't fully understand. And I set out to change that with Diskill. So that's why we're having this conversation today. But that that was my origin story in the blue pickup truck. And from there, it's it's uh, it's history. I I love that it's that story has CTE written all over it. I'm dad is giving that in that blue pickup truck. Dad is giving off Sam Walton vibes, you know, (laughs) to me, you know, from the Walmart, just like a get it done. Sam's one of his heroes, by the way. Really? Okay. Oh My yeah, that you know the holy T-shirts and the the yeah. old pickup truck, and nobody yeah. would ever blink an eye and say that's a successful person. But you know, it's sometimes the people that we overlook who teach us the most. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And I and that story, it's like what you and I both align on so so deeply of uh, exposure and real world experiential learning opportunities. So for Dad, just to say like here. Moment of learning by doing. I know you're nervous. Get over it. Communication, negotiation. <laughs> but then how did you feel? I do want to ask you this. The sense, did you feel a sense of accomplishment after it went well? Like, how did you feel? I felt a, a fire start up. And yeah. sometimes my dad would catch me, you know, weeks later, since I had been the really uninterested in the business sort of gal, you know, I was the one who was stuck in the, if I don't get straight A's, if I don't do my math homework perfectly, I'm going to be a failure. And after that moment, I started picking up every book I could find on business, negotiation, trades. I was really interested in just exploring the world on my own terms. And that was a real shift for me from, you know, you shared in my bio, I started college when I was 14. So I was sort of ahead, you know, ahead of the curve academically, so to speak. And I put all my value on that as even a middle and high schooler. And I think I'm not alone in that. A lot of kids put all their value in their grades and don't, again, don't have that pivotal moment. So for me, I'm so glad I had a moment that broke that cycle for a second and allowed me to realize I have so much more to give the world than just a, a great GPA. Yeah, and I think that's so important for, for students really on both sides who may be struggling with the GPA part or who are excelling with the GPA part to say, like, I'm not in this in this modern world. We can't let the GPA define who you are and what opportunities are are available to you. It's just one signal, right? Versus the experiences that the world is looking for that that create the skills. I'm, I'm my last question before I move off of that. Best piece of advice that he that he gave to you. My dad. Yes. Oh gosh, the one that immediately comes to mind that I use every day is he would always tell me. People are just people. That has changed my life, Sylvester. So I, you know, I'm a few connections away from some of the most powerful people in the world, connected with some of the most powerful people in the world. However you define power, political power, economic power, whatever it is, right? And the reason I can talk to those people with such confidence is my dad's advice. People are just people. And I'll just throw back one one other story here because I think this is inspiring to students, to teachers, to, to everyone. 
So one of my Obi one, my Obi one is is Chris Lockhead. My dad's my other Obi one, but he's my dad. You know, he has he has special privileges. My Obi one, who's not blood rela- uh, related, is Chris Lockhead. Now, Chris was your very very typical kid who did not thrive in school. So Chris was dyslexic, had ADHD. He had you know all the things that made traditional studying really, really challenging. In fact, it was so bad. His teachers told him, you know, you'll never be able to write. He got kicked out of high school. He didn't have any options. Well, fast forward. So Chris is my Obi-Wan. He's now in his 50s. Chris has been a three-time CMO in Silicon Valley. He's written 14 number one best-selling books. And he just got his marketing book, Play Bigger, just got rated at the top five marketing books of all time by Adobe. I could go on and on with his accolades. Basically, the point being, he was your F student. He flunked out of high school. He was a terrible student. He, you know, played around with some CTE things. He tried apprenticeships. He eventually started his own company. But the point being, school can't define you, you know, and the students who we might look at and say, gosh, I wish I could help them. You know, there's the C, D or F students or whatever. Those kids often have some of the most creative, out-of-the-box potential, especially now that AI is here and the playing field that it's redefining. And and I'll say, Sylvester, from all my research and, and working with kids like this, I think the kids who the school system currently says are the worst students are going to be the best most forward-thinking adopters of AI technology that empowers them to sort of cover up the the weaknesses, if we call even can call them weaknesses, like maybe it's writing or the things that are more complicated for their brains to help them unlock other potential in other areas. And I've personally seen firsthand the, the kids I know who are dyslexic, my siblings being some of them, are some of the fastest adopters of this tech and they are soaring. So I say all this to say there is so much hope right now for kids who are thriving in CTE, who are thriving yeah. with different brains, thriving with out-of-the-box thinking mentalities because the future belongs to rebels. I love it. And I, I see it as not covering up weaknesses, but being resourceful, right? Being resourceful. Let's, let's, let's move this conversation into the skills and, and talk to me about the work that you're leading and how you're helping high schoolers, um, with this adoption of digital and AI skills, talk to me, like, give us an introduction. What, how do you describe the skills? Yeah. So I'll share a quick story first, because this is some of, these are my favorite ways of describing what we're up to. And then I'll get granular and, and share what it looks like. So we run 10 week sprints. They're mm-hmm. all virtual kids. The way I like to think of it is if you imagine a school, Imagine above the school, like hovering above is like a UFO or like a space launch pad. Kids join us out of school and they come to our launch pad to what we call the Skills Rebel Base with students from all over the globe. They add digital and AI skills to their existing skill set or their existing passions. You know, maybe they're interested in welding or digital design, or, you know, it could be any passions they have. They add AI skills, they become AI powered humans. Then they launch into impacting the real world, real small businesses in their communities or online. So one of my favorite moments during one of these 10 week sprints, which is called Impact 10, So in these 10 weeks, students, there's a combination of live sessions. They're in a community online so they can chat with each other, give each other feedback, access their mentors, access AI tools, all that. So there's one moment on a live session. This was a few months ago during week three of the cohort. And there was a breakout room. This is, you know, in the lives, it's really, really interactive. And in the room was a student from a remote island of Molokai in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. There was a student from Belgium and a student from Toronto, Canada. They were all, you know, between the ages of 15 and 18. We work primarily with high schoolers. So they're in this breakout room. And here was the task that they were assigned. The discussion slash 
project was identify using AI, you know, use all the tools at your fingertips, use AI resources and identify impact gaps in your local community. Now, I won't go into all of what impact gaps entail, but the essence is find gaps in you know, opportunities, problems in your community and small businesses or nonprofits, really anything that catches your eye, you as a native digital can find, right? So maybe they don't have an AI chatbot on their website. Maybe they're losing business because no one can book their services online. Maybe they don't have flyers for events that are coming up. Whatever the student sees, we sort of teach them to find these gaps. Well, these three students, uh, Priyal, Guillaume, and Dustin, were yeah. in this space. And I popped in for a second. It was so cool to watch, Sylvester. So these students were on Google Earth. One of them had you know, GPT pulled up because they were doing some research on impact gaps. The other had Google Earth pulled up. And they were walking the streets of Belgium, finding small like bakeries, laundromats that they could find impact gaps in. And the team was just collaborating. They're finding these yeah. problems and discussing the, the skills they could use to solve these problems. And they just were so excited, right? They're like, talking about the impact gaps they're finding, things I had not even thought about, and using AI as an assistant to help them figure out how they could solve these challenges. That's the type of moment that's happening when kids change the way they look at the world. It's kind of like putting on 3D glasses for a moment mm -hmm. and looking at the world through the lens of impact gaps. Mm -hmm. I'll back up here quickly to say mm -hmm. this. So a lot of times when people ask me, you know, what is DeSkills about? You know, what do we stand for? And I'll, I'll back up to that in a moment too. But a lot of times people will hear, you know, AI and AI and AI. And the part that sometimes gets lost is at DeSkills, we're not just equipping kids with AI skills. It's more about equipping kids with the skills and mindsets to succeed in an AI powered future. Now those are very different things. And here's why. There's a lot of approaches and conversations right now happening around AI in education, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do we embed AI into how do we how we teach? That's great, but they're missing a really really crucial crucial piece, which is in a world where AI is now taking our standardized exams, right? Our SATs, our LSATs, our, all these exams we measure human intelligence by. It's taking those exams and it's no longer just scoring in the bottom 10%. It's scoring in the top 10% on those right. exams. So I would, I would posit that instead of asking, how can we use AI to teach obsolete things easier, faster, better, right? Instead, shouldn't we be teaching different things? So an, what, an example. What, what are those? Yeah, I was going to say, what are <laughs> what are some of those different things you feel like we should be putting more emphasis on in, in education? Yeah. So this is this is why we're doing what we're doing at DeSkills, because when I look at the future, you know, if you take a macro view and none of us can predict it. But when I think about where AI is headed and the exponential growth that it's having and the jobs that it's changing and the jobs it's it's creating and replacing, I believe that the crucial skill sets our students are going to need to have are the things that are uniquely human. So a couple examples are we're going to need the ability to think outside the box and creatively. So instead of just memorizing knowledge and applying it, we're not in a knowledge-based world anymore. We're moving toward a world where what you create, the net new things you create, are how you as a human add value. So if you're going to be successful in the future, I believe that you're going to need to be able to leverage AI to en enhance your abilities, to make you AI powered, but you ultimately need to be the creator capitalist, the one who's creating the value, right? So creative outside of the box thinking is going to be so huge. And I, you know, I was, I was in Hawaii the last couple of weeks touring mm -hmm. many, many different schools. And we asked students, you know, what skills do you think are you're going to need more of in a future where AI powers the world? 
And which do you think you'll need less of? What skills, what skills did they say? I'm curious. What were some of the, what were some of the answers there? The students get it, which is what's so interesting. The students get it. Here's what they're telling me. And they're so right. Creativity, the ability to prompt and, and be AI savvy, to prompt and get what you want to out of the AI, right? They were saying things like tenacity, like they weren't using that word, but that's how to summarize it, right? It's right. like the ability to stick through when things get hard. They were using words like innovation, you know, the ability to think outside of what an AI might respond with. And they're completely right, because if you look at the skills that that make us uniquely human, you're looking at things like tenacity, like connection, like creativity. So I'll, I'll give you another story because this is a really interesting example of this. So we have a term at Skills we call impact first learning. I know you and I talked about this in our first yeah, call. Yeah, when you yeah, when we were having another conversation and we were talking about experiential learning and all the different things, and you dropped that term on me, impact first learning. I'm like, oh, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Talk to me. Um, enlighten our audience on impact first learning. Yeah, it, impact first learning is it's the foundation of everything we do at Diskills. And I'll give a story to illustrate what this is. But the reason this is so critical in light of the AI discussion is we're quickly moving to a world. We are we already exist in a world and it's just going to get, you know, more like this where students cannot can achieve audacious goals without starting with a playbook that goes A to Z. They can instead start with the Z and work back to A. So here's what I mean. We held a competition last summer where we asked students, this was, you know, GPT-4 was a brand new thing. We we're just curious what kids could do with, with AI. So we put up a competition and the challenge was using GPT, to start a business in 30 days. That was it. So on the first kickoff session, we had a student from Kansas City, she was 14, named Rory, and a student who is 17 from South Carolina. So two different time zones, her name is Anna, two different time zones, never met each other, two different ages, you know, different interests. They decided to pair up. And these two young ladies said, by the end of 30 days, our business that we're going to build is a fully functioning productivity tracker that is a, a Chrome extension, basically, right? So we're going to build a productivity tracker to help students with their studying, but we're not going to stop there. We're also going to launch a social media page for it with merchandise branded with our name, which is Acadium, right? Now, here's the kicker. Neither Rory nor Anna had ever coded anything in their lives. They'd never coded. They'd never launched a social media campaign. They'd never branded anything. And yet every goal they set out for themselves, they had never done, but they wanted to achieve. Impact first learning. Set an impact we want to reach, that, that sort of goal that we're looking toward, the Z, and then work backwards and fill in our knowledge gaps. And that is exactly what they did. Using GPT, they coded a fully functioning Chrome extension and had it submitted. They they ended up launching a social media page. And by the time the competition ended, they had almost 500 followers. They partnered with multiple social media influencers to, to cross promote, and they launched a merch line. So they had existing customers and revenue coming in by the end of 30 days. And these two young ladies never even met the whole time. They just texted. Yeah. That's what we call impact first learning. So you set an impact and then you work backwards. And Rory told me, you know, Hannah, I've never coded before. I've tried to pick up, you know, Python for dummies. And they always start with hello world or something like that. And then they work you up. But she said, I never got anywhere. But when I started with the goal, the impact I wanted to reach, and I worked backwards using AI as my guide, but not just my guide, my assistant, my coding assistant. Because GPT can literally code for you if you've got the creativity and the tenacity to push through when things get tough and to put pieces together. Yeah. The, the analogy I'll give here quickly is it's kind of like we're in an era now with AI where it's kind of like driving a car. 
So none of us, at least not me, maybe you do, maybe you know exactly how a car functions and every single part of how the engine works and how the fuel you know, goes from place to place and all that, right? I don't, but I can still drive a car. That's where we're going with coding, with writing, with everything is you don't have to know all the ways things work to get a product or an outcome or an impact that you want to create. And that's the power. I I think what you just said there is, is the point where I think a lot of educators in our education system struggle with, with that part of like, oh, especially in a, a modern car, you get a brand new BMW. All you know is you push that button to start. It's, it's going to start and you can drive away and and then it will tell you when it needs the oil changed or air in the tire. It, it, it will tell you that part. But you don't know so many of the a lot of the behind the scenes parts of what's moving in there. And I think that's where we're still using maybe, like you said, AI to potentially teach things that are historical in nature that maybe we should be thinking more creatively in how we can layer this in, in context of a certain subject matter or something like that. Um, talk to me about, we were talking about some of the sprints and for someone listening, bring this home on how they could potentially layer in the skills or, you know, with the AI workshop in one of your sprints with the creativity and uh, the book you were telling me about. Yeah. 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 I want to back up here really quick though, and give you a quick lens on this, this car analogy, because I think to your point, mm -hmm. the te teachers listening might be going, Oh my gosh, I want my kids to know how the car works. <laughs> right. I want yeah. them to know yeah. the engine. So let me just wrap up that piece. And then yes, there's some exciting, exciting integrations to discuss. Okay. So when Rory, one of the, the competitors uh, with a KDM, when she was describing to me her learning process of how she coded this Chrome extension, she told me what I shared already, which was, I've never gotten a finished product. Now I did, right? Because I started at the end and I worked backwards. But the second thing she told me, which I thought was really insightful, is she said, I learned how to code by coding something impactful. Mm -hmm. So what, what she was discovering, you know, if you take that car engine example, by the process of having the finished product in mind and working backwards, the AI wasn't just doing everything for her, right? Mm -hmm. She had to problem solve. She had to figure out how pieces went together. But she also started seeing patterns in the code. She started seeing how HTML and Python and JavaScript worked. She was learning the language by setting that impact and moving backwards. So I want teachers to hear that and hopefully be encouraged by it, that this is sort of a different lens of thinking about how we get our students excited about learning and how we get them to the end goal they might want to achieve. It's not like you have to upheave everything you're doing, right? Yeah. You could just say, maybe there is a, a project or an end goal that we're trying to reach then let the students self-discover along the road, what do they find interesting about the code they're working with? Do they need some mentorship when they don't understand how a piece goes together or how that engine works? You know, you don't have to abandon the learning of that quote unquote historic knowledge. It's still going to be really important for humans to understand how we get there. Maybe not every human, you know, not a very small percentage of us will ever actually work on the tech behind these large language models. It's still going to be important for some students to understand that. But the vast majority of us, if we have this new lens of seeing AI as an assistant, as a partner in our own learning, and instead of going from A to Z, we go Z to A, we could literally each teacher in our classrooms could change yeah. the whole trajectory of students' futures when we teach them Z to A, because ultimately that's what they're going to need when they go into their careers. I love it. I love it. I love it. And and, and you're really you're really doing the work. 
you really are doing the work in leading this. I, I like, I like it. Um, now let's get, let's get back to that, to that question for someone yeah. who's listening and they're like, yeah, this may be a lot to, to bring into uh, my environment. Uh, give me, give me this example of the book and the, the, the sprint that you're leading. Yeah. So uh, we work with a lot of teachers, a lot of schools who say, you know, we're not ready to take the big leap of changing every way we do education, right? I mean, that's the reason we invented the skills as a launch pad that hovers above the school instead of integrating inside of classes. But we want to make sure we can provide resources to any teacher who's like, I want my kids and myself to be learning how to use this. So we have these one day virtual AI project sprints. They pop up at different points in the month. They're on our website, which I'll give you in a second. But the one that's coming up, I'm so excited about, it's called Book Sprint. Students and teachers both can can compete, can enroll. It's free. You come to this session and you are going to be able to write and illustrate an entire children's book in a single day. Now, it's so cool because we're running it as a competition. So the winning team will get 100 copies of their book published and printed, and they'll be given back to their school. But you'll also have your book live on Amazon where anybody can purchase it, which is going to be so cool. That's so awesome. And the whole thing is showing the the students how to use AI to do this. That's so it's cool. the power. It's a it's a, a mini example of what you can do when you're AI powered. You know, we've got book sprint coming up in future months. We're going to have merch sprint where students will design their own fashion line in a day. We're going to have music sprint where you write an album in a day and launch it on Spotify. Like we're going to have all these cool sprints. And, you know, teachers reach out to me all the time. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I can take a break for an afternoon and just let the kids join this project sprint virtually and I can guide them. Them and I can also, you know, do this. So those um, those sprints are on our website at Skills. It's just dskills.io forward slash sprints, and they're all free. You can you can take advantage of those. And yeah, our that's, whole mission here so is cool. to just empower people. Yeah, that's that's so cool, and I, I love the the experiential learning in that place. Better yet, excuse me the impact first learning. How about Mm -hmm. that? Okay. Because I want (laughs) to write that album. Let's do it. Let's start it with the AI. Let's that's so cool. Um, You also, we talked earlier about you, your experience in Hawaii and, and I know you were doing, you're you're working on a a great project with, uh, you know, with one of the schools there around their CTE and the culinary and medical. Talk to me about that a little more, please. Yeah. So I, and I may, I may be biased and we may be biased on on this podcast, Sylvester, but I think students in CTE are are going back to what we talked about earlier, going to be some of the most amazingly skilled, upskilled students with AI in any part of our schools, any part of our world. And I think it's powerful. So I was in Hawaii for the last couple of weeks. I met with Everybody from public, private, charter, independent, international schools all over uh, the island of Oahu. It was amazing. You know, I got to see what schools are already using AI, what schools are not, which ones have project-based learning, which ones don't. And one of the schools is really doing some super innovative things. It's um, Waipahu School. And while I was there, I didn't get to go see it, but they launched a student-led medical clinic. So cool. They opened it. The students are the ones learning about medicine, how to treat people, and it's open to the community. So you can go in and get treatment. It it works very much like a technical college, Mm -hmm. but it's a high school. Right. So they've got culinary programs. They've got all sorts of offerings, industrial mechanical offerings, which I think is just amazing. So one of the things that one of the sort of ongoing conversations, not just in Hawaii, but everywhere, including at Waipahu, this public school on on Oahu, is the conversation around how do we help students in CTE to leverage AI to expand their horizons, expand their opportunities. 
And I don't know of many schools that have quite figured that out yet. It seems to be this lurking discussion. Maybe you know of some. Do you know of any who are fully embracing AI in their CTE programs? Um, I'm I'm starting to see it be layered in more. Um, some of the business classes, some of the schools we work with, they're allowing students to use it to to get past like the blank slate. Like, I don't what should we call our business? I don't know. Like, you know, here's some potential names or logo ideas, like those kinds of things uh, to help move them past that blank slate. So, uh, sure. Yeah, but but you're still running into a lot of the plagiarism part is a, yeah. is the big struggle bus right now for everyone. Like, what is something that you created or you didn't create? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's and that's what I'm hearing a lot. And again, this is why we founded the skills as a as an extracurricular as this launch pad above the schools because it's so much easier for a school to say, you know, we're not going to use GPT in the classroom because, you know, whatever the reasons are. But what we are going to do is offer this opportunity for our students to outside of school get access to the ability to add AI skills and that mentality but also, and this is the magic of the skills and what's happening in Hawaii, and I'll share some examples. The magic is not only are they leveraging AI skills, they're mm -hmm. also taking the next step, which is impacting the real world. So what's happening in our sprint, just to give you a really quick overview, students join this launch pad, this rebel base. They're adding AI skills to their passions. But when I say AI skills, what I mean is they're doing things like building their own custom AI employees who can help them in their small business more efficiently execute projects. And what are those projects? So we call them impact projects, right? Impact first learning. They build an impact project. What it is, is they identify small businesses or nonprofits in their community. They find impact gaps. Then they use the skills they've learned, whether that's AI, it could be videography, it could be SEO, it could be web design, whatever the student's interested in. Then they impact that business. So by the time they leave a 10-week sprint, they've got three things. One is a paid impact project. So they're actually, during the 10 weeks, they're, they do one unpaid to build their portfolio then we actually give them the tools and resources to sell themselves, sell their skills and these packages to then land a paid engagement with a real business. Wow. The second thing is they actually leave with 50 or more LinkedIn connections. So while they're going through this sprint, they're actually connecting with professionals on LinkedIn from all over the globe who follow their journey, support them, comment on their posts, comment on their portfolios. So the kids are getting that external validation from the actual like workforce. It's not just isolated inside the school. And the third thing they're leaving with is all of the, the skills and mindsets to continue launching projects and their own like earning income on their own terms wherever they decide to go next. So that if, you know, imagine the students of Waipahu who are interested in medicine and they're working in the clinic. That's amazing. They're on a CTE path. Well, what if that student says, you know, I really have my eye on getting an internship with this prestigious medical school. What if they join this 10 week sprint? They decide to target small medical, nonprofit medical clinics in their community and build websites for them. Now, on their portfolio, their resume, when they go to apply for these internships, they're able to say, I identified through my own lens that this impact gap existed, right? These nonprofit medical clinics didn't have websites. So in order to increase their impact, I built them a website, check out what I did, and these are the skills I have as a result. 
So whatever that student's interested in, if, whether it's unlocking internship opportunities, uh, going to college for a, a particular career, or even just opening the door to a conversation and having the confidence to talk with professionals at you know the auto mechanic shop or the plumbing business down the road, whatever they're interested in, this this resource, this mindset, I'll keep saying mindsets because it's more about the mindsets than mm-hmm. the actual technical skills. But once they have those mindsets, the doors they can start to unlock for themselves, creating their own opportunities is so powerful. These kids so sometimes good. go from no confidence to like full blown confidence yeah. in themselves and what they can do. And it's just amazing. That's that's what I wake up for every yeah. morning, just excited to see how these kids like turn their lives around and their mindsets around. Your your passion and enthusiasm uh, for the work that you're leading and, and helping our, our youth and our education system move into the future and leverage this this new tool. Um it's so important and so needed. Before I ask my last question, um, sh- I want you to share if someone is interested in in doing one of the sprints or working with you directly or bringing the skills to their area, where should they go? Best place is our website. It's We say the skills, but it's dskills.io. Everything's on there. We got those awesome one-day sprints for teachers to bring their classes. We got the applications for Impact 10. We've got free workshops. Like all, yeah, it's it's awesome. We want to be as, as much of a resource provider as we possibly can to everyone trying to do education a little differently. Outstanding, outstanding. So I'm super excited about your answer to my last question. Can I ask every guest this? What is your vision for the future career tech education? Oh, gosh. I will wrap this into my vision for what the future of DeSkills is because I really think CTE and DeSkills are like the perfect marriage, you know, peas in a pod. It's, it's like the perfect, perfect melding ground. We have a vision at DeSkills to equip a million students with impact portfolios, which basically means by the time they graduate high school, they're not competing on, you know, a better SAT score, better grades, whatever. They instead have a whole portfolio of impacts they can show where they've made a difference by creating their own projects and impacting the real world. All the things we've talked about, right? Yeah. Imagine if our kids in CTE, as they think about their futures, all the whatever skills that they're learning right now, hopefully a wide you know swath of skills that they can pull from wherever they decide to go. Imagine that they could take those skills, they could learn those technical skills, but then they could add this, this digital and AI competency to, to expand, to, to amplify, to, to grow their opportunities for themselves so they can create whatever pathway they want for their future. And I'll say this to say, it is projected that Gen Z and Gen Alpha, so my generation and the next one, are going to have on average between seven and 10 careers in our lifetime, not jobs, careers. So that student who's in CTE, who's interested in whatever it is, culinary, welding, automotive, whatever they're into, imagine they can add this skill set, these digital, these AI competencies, put them together into something powerful. Those kids are going to be prepared for wherever life takes them, whatever turn it takes, whether that's career one, that's truly, you know, a trade career two, that might be in digital media, a career three, that might be in, you know, uh, videography or going back to school. Like there's just so many opportunities and my vision, and I ho- hope CTE will go this way as well, is to just amplify and expand the opportunities all of our students have access to so they're equipped for this future where AI powers the world. Future where AI powers the world. Hannah, thank you so much for all your insights, the skills, all the knowledge (laughs) that you just (laughs) dropped. (laughs) 
I'm sorry, Get the skills, not the, not the drills, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, I had, so, I had so much fun with you with you on the show. For everyone listening, if you enjoyed this episode, please don't be selfish. Share it with a friend uh, who, who we need to move forward in this space to understand the innovation that's taking place and making sure we're preparing our students with this information and these opportunities. Until the next episode, as I always say, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Global CTE podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to be the first to know about future episodes.